Hello everyone, this is Catalyst Angel and welcome back to my series, How to Mind Wind, my guide for new people. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate all of the legendary weapons and all of these weapons can be bought from this villager right here in the corner. He's in the back of Slash Warp Castle and when you buy this item from him, you can see that the letters are big, bold, and red. They're very noticeable. And that is true for all of these. When you uh, use it to the point where like it's red and you want to repair it, your first god repair of the item, it will lose its red name. So you can see all my items here, except for Lifestealer, are blue named. Um, this is unavoidable. It's going to happen unless you keep it in your ender chest forever and never use it. But when you kill someone in the wild or in castle, in the chat itself, when it says you've killed someone, the name will still say um, Indra in big red bold letters. So uh, some of these I will demonstrate in Warp Castle for the safety of my test subject, and some of them I will do in Wild to show you the sheer destructive power. Um, if you like the video, leave a like, give a comment, talk to me please. Um, uh, and all of this, as always, is possible due to Jay Fontaine, my video editor. Thank you very much, Fontaine. Right, so let's get started. So I have Corrupted Diggity and a regular Diggity to show you the difference between the two. Obviously, you can read that Corrupted Diggity, which is renamed to Angel's Blessing, because I'm an angel and it's a blessing to use. Duh. Uh, it's Fortune 10, and then regular Diggity is only Fortune 6, but it also has Efficiency 7 and I'm breaking 9. So Fontaine and I are going to demonstrate the difference between the two in terms of, you know, this one may be more efficient and faster, but this one you get a lot more uh, ore from, or drops per an ore. So we're each going to have a stack of emeralds, and we're going to block up to the sky away from each other so I don't pick up any of his emeralds, vice versa. Oh! <laughs> I was like, what is he doing? <laughs> uh, 10 out of 10. Okay, and Fontaine and I are going to race to the bottom. Ready? Three, two, one, go! And uh, I could have chosen any or I could have done uh, diamond or redstone or whatever, but I figured emerald was the best because emeralds are more useful and I totally didn't have a stack of diamond ore offhand or two because one as well. And you can see he's already finished with his... Okay, so I got one, two, three, four, five, five and almost six complete stacks of emerald pieces from the one stack of emerald ore. And Corrupted Diggity, it loses one dura per a blocked mind. And this is important to remember because people will uh, buy a grip hair from me, but their C dig will still have like 400 dura out of 1,500. And I'll be like, dude, you could have mined 400 blocks, but they'll be like, oh, I was scared because it was red, like in the red. You should turn on or toggle durability so you can like see the actual numbers because you get like the most if you go all the way to one dura because repairs are expensive. Most players charge three digs per a repair. Um, and I don't know where Fontaine went. Fontaine, come back. Let me love you. So he got one, two, three, almost four full stacks, and I had one, two, three, four, five, almost six full stacks. So you get practically double the amount of drops with C dig compared to a regular diggity. 
Elder Branch is a sharp 10 wooden sword. Uh, that's why it calls it a twig, because it doesn't do a lot of damage by itself, sharp 10 wooden. Um, the point of Elder Branch is that it has a really cool special ability that only works during night. So if you're fighting in castle um, and you're in the sheep room, right, you want to have a clock in your inventory so you can tell when it's nighttime out because this will only work during nighttime and the durability goes down super fast. So you want to make sure every hit you get in counts. I'm going to take a swing and about eight invisible wither skeletons spawn, all holding sharp ten elder branches, and hit Fontaine. Bef oh, and he died from it. He was wearing a full protection five set, and he still died. So you, can you imagine if we're in castle, say, and he's wearing a full god set, if I hit him like four times with elder branch, he's got a lot of wither skeletons on him and they're all doing hella insane durability damage on his armor. He needs to find a way with, to deal with them by jumping in water or lava in castle or he needs to take off his armor before it breaks. You could see before I hit him I had 54 durability and now I only have 51 so that's 3 dura per swing and you only get 59 to start out with. So you don't have a lot of hits per a repair, but the point isn't necessarily to even kill the enemy, it's to take Dura off their armor. So if I Ebo and Fontaine, you can see that he lost a hefty amount of Dura on his P5 pieces. So the next item is Indra, which is my favorite legendary. Um, it can only work in the rain. So if you use it when it's not raining, of course it stops raining. <laughs> if you use it when it's not raining, it acts as a normal bow. So I'll shoot Fontaine. And you see he loses uh, three and a half hearts per just one shot. And I, I hadn't even like drawn the bow back all the way. And you get a message in the chat that says lightning requires storm. Um, this item is really good, particularly in castle and bait but it takes a clan effort to fuck the sun. And by typing slash, no, just fuck the sun, it, it's on cooldown. Fuck Fontaine, that was like a four minute rainstorm. What the hell? Oh, I'm so upset. Not even four minutes, it's like 40 seconds. That's what I meant to say. I'm so upset, okay. Indra, my favorite legendary, um, is a power 19 bow and alone it's it's not meant to be used as like a regular bow you're only supposed to use it when it's raining because when it's raining it shoots lightning and Fontaine lost five hearts and he's wearing a full p5 set so if I shoot him again well I kind of missed so at two to three shots people in full p5 Oh shit, Fontaine, you lost your stuff! Uh, well, so now we also know that if you kill someone in the wild with Indra, all of their stuff will burn up. So don't use it if you want the gear they drop, because it won't drop, it'll burn. Um, but it's really good in Castle too, because Contrary to belief, it does work indoors, so if you're in the sheep room and you know it's raining outside, um, the lightning will come through the building to hit the person. It consumes arrows, so it doesn't have infinity, and it uses, I think, about 20 durability per shot, so you get quite a few uses out of it as well. So Fontaine totally lost his protection 5 armor due to a little Indra incident. So I gave him two pieces of God and he is going to uh, hit me a few times with a regular vanilla sword. More. I'm going to make this easier and take off some of my armor. Yeah, more. Uh, okay, that's- oh! <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna run at him with Life Stealer before I die, and I'm gonna hit him. And you can see I get like two, two and a half hearts back each for each swing of Life Stealer I do. Yeah.
that's that. That is all Life Stealer does. It's not a good standalone PvP weapon. Um, it has to be paired with something else. A Sharp 20 Death Scythe or uh, a Dern or a Mist. Whatever your weapon preference is, it can't be used alone. It's not good enough. It doesn't do enough damage. It's only good for life steal. And even then, if you're in a pinch, eating a gapple will always be better than using life stealer. The Penthes, or NEP for short, uh, says it shoots specters, which is a fancy way of saying it shoots creepers. And the creepers it shoots can have special effects like creeper of darkness, creeper of fire, etc, etc. Um, the durability you see is 75 out of 384. It takes one dura per a creeper shot. It's not infinity, so you need a lot of arrows on you. And I'm gonna shoot it at Fontaine. And you can see he's wearing two pieces of god. Um, so it, it's not doing a lot of damage. This is a weapon that is meant to be spammed at a person. And if it's in castle, you want to make sure you're like sending out like 50. And it does so much durability damage on armor. Like if you're right on top of, let's say 10 neps exploding, you, one of your pieces might break. Um, so it's a really good castle weapon. It's a really good griefing weapon. So you can see all this beautiful wreckage. Fontaine still won't die because the god armor I gave him is good. I'm taking him. A lot of damage. Oh, there we go. Woo! I killed him! <laughs> and you can see all this blood and guts. Shit. Eee! And that was a withering creeper. Too many. Too many! Too many! But yes, it's a beautiful wreckage mess. It's good for trolling people. Um, but I wouldn't shoot it off in someone's face unless you want it to burn down. Um, and they sell for relatively cheap. They sell for like 30 dags, 25 dags. So it's easier to buy from a player than to buy from the villager at Warp Castle. Obsidian Destroyer, and I named mine I'm Gonna Wreck It, because it's a Wreck It Ralph reference. I love Pixar. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. It says instant mining. Um, and what it does is it basically wrecks any block that you touch instantly. So it's really good for, say, mining obsidian, which it takes a really long time to mine. Jay Fontaine is across from me and he's holding an efficiency six pickaxe, which is the highest efficiency that you can get on mine wind outside of uh, obsidian destroyer. So three, two, one, we're gonna go down. And I, you can see I just absolutely tear through the obsidian all the way to the bottom. Well, Fontaine has only gone through three or four blocks, it looks like. So, obsidian destroyer is really good if you get TP trapped in an obsidian block and you wanna mine out. Or if you need obsidian to make yourself a vault or a really big gold farm like this one once was. Uh, but it no longer works, so that's why it's okay to take it down. I would never grieve something. Um, but yeah, that's it. People sell obsidian destroyers for relatively cheap, I'd say like 30 digs, but again, everything is negotiable. This concludes my demo on legendary weapons. I hope you guys learned something new and enjoyed the video. Thanks again to Jay Fontaine for being so kind and helping me make this video and doing all the editing. Um, like I said, like and subscribe, leave a comment. Um, I don't know what to do for my next video. I want to do one, an advanced one on economy and prices or a guide to like PvPing, but you guys tell me what you want me to do if you have any more questions you want to be answered, um, if you want to see a tutorial on something in particular, I will do that too. So let me know if you have any ideas. See you next time. Bye!